fairy tell true from the tales of the brothers Grimm. Near the opening to a large forest lived a woodcutter with his wife. They had only one child, a little maiden of three years old, and they were so very poor that they could scarcely find bread to eat from day to day. One morning the woodcutter, full of sorrow, went into the wood to his work, and while he cut down trees with his axe, all at once a beautiful lady stood before him. She had a crown of glittering stars on her head, and diamonds sparkled in her hair. Then she spoke to the woodcutter. I am the good fairy, tell true, and mother of all good children. You are poor and miserable. Bring me your little child. I will be a mother to her, and provide for her with the greatest care. The woodcutter was very glad to give up his little girl to such a good fairy, so he called her to him and gave her to the beautiful lady, who carried her up to a delightful palace in the clouds. Here she was very happy. She had sugared bread to eat, and sweet, fresh milk to drink. Her clothes were of silk and gold, and she played with the fairy's good children all day. Here she remained till she reached the age of fourteen, and one day the good fairy called to her and said, Dear child, I have a long journey to take. And while I am absent, I intend to leave the thirteen keys of the doors in my fairy palace in your care. You are free to open twelve of these doors and examine the wonderful things which the rooms contain. But the thirteenth, to which this little key belongs, you are forbidden to enter. If you do, great sorrow and misfortune will happen to you. The young girl promised faithfully to remember this injunction. And when the good fairy was gone, she began at once to examine the rooms of the palace. Each day she unlocked one, until she had opened all the twelve. In each room she saw a beautiful fairy surrounded with a clear and brilliant light, and so much brightness and glory that she, as well as the good children who accompanied her, were full of joy. Now the forbidden door still remained unopened, but such a longing desire arose in her heart to see what the room contained, that she said to her companions, I, I will just open this door the very little way, and peep in. Oh no, don't, said one of the good children. That would be wrong. The good fairy has forbidden you to do so. Then something dreadful will happen if you do. The young girl was silent, for the longing desire in her heart would not be still and day after day her curiosity increased so much that she could not rest. At last, one day, when all her young companions were absent, she thought to herself, Now I shall be able to go in and have a peep, and no one would ever know. So she fetched the keys, and, taking the right one in her hand, placed it in the lock and turned it round. The moment she did so, the door sprang open, and she saw three beautiful fairies seated on the throne of fire in a blaze of light. She stood for a while, bewildered with astonishment. Then she moved forwards a little, and placed her finger in the glittering light, and when she drew it back, her finger was covered with gold. On seeing this, she was seized with a terrible fear, and shutting the door quickly, she ran away to another part of the palace. But she could not overcome her fear, and her heart beat violently when she found that the gold would not come off her finger, although she rubbed and washed it with all her might. Not very long after this, the good fairy returned home, and calling the maiden to her, requested her to give up the keys of the palace. As she placed them in the fairy's hand, she looked earnestly into the young girl's eyes and said, Have you opened the thirteenth door? No was the reply. The good fairy laid her hand on the young girl's heart, and knew by its beating which she felt that she had been disobeyed, and that the door had been opened. Then she said again, Have you opened the thirteenth door? No, was the reply for the second time. Then the fairy caught sight of the maiden's finger, which had become golden when she touched the fiery light, and knew by this that she was guilty. For a third time she asked the same question, but the young girl still answered, Oh. Then the good fairy said to the maiden, 
You have not attended to my commands, nor spoken the truth. You are therefore not fit to remain with good children in this beautiful palace in the clouds. As the fairy spoke, the maiden fell into a deep sleep and sunk down upon the earth. When she awoke, she found herself alone in a great wilderness, and on attempting to cry out, her voice could no longer be heard, for she had been struck dumb. Then she sprang up and attempted to force her way out of the wilderness, but wherever she turned, the thick thorn bushes drove her back, and she could not pass through them. The enclosure in which she now found herself shut in was surrounded by hollow caves, and in one of these she determined to take up her abode. Therefore, when night came on, she crept in and slept till morning, and during stormy or rainy weather it formed her only shelter. Her life now was indeed miserable, and whenever she thought of those happy days when she had lived in the beautiful palace, with good children for her companions, she wept bitterly. Her food consisted of roots and wild berries, which she had to search for, and in autumn she collected all the dry leaves and carried them to the hollow cave to serve her for a bed. In winter, the nuts were her food, and when the snow and ice came, she rolled herself like a poor animal in the leaves and let her long hair fall round her like a mantle, for her clothes were all in rags. So one year after another passed, during which she endured the greatest want and misery. One day in the spring, when the trees were decked in their fresh green leaves, the king of the country was hunting in the forest, and while following a deer, he saw it disappear among the thick bushes which encircled the old hollow caves. To follow the deer, he alighted from his horse, and made a way for himself through the bushes with his sword. When he had thus cleared a path, he saw a beautiful maiden seated under a tree, and clothed from head to foot in her own golden hair. He stood still at first in silent astonishment, and then he said, Who art thou, fair maiden, and why dost thou sit here in this lonely place? But she could not answer him, for her lips were sealed. Then the king spoke again, Will you go with me to my palace? Then she nodded her head, and the king, taking her in his arms, lifted her on his horse and rode home with her. As soon as they arrived at the castle, he gave her beautiful clothing and everything she wanted in abundance, and although she could not speak, she was so beautiful and graceful that the king fell in love with her, and in a very short time they were married. In a year after, the young queen had a little son, and while she was lying on her bed during the night, the good fairy appeared to her and said, Will thou now own the truth? that thou didst open the forbidden door. If thou wilt, I will restore to thee the power of speech. But if thou art still obstinate, and persist in denying thy sin, then I will take thy newborn babe with me. Then the power of speech was given to the queen to enable her to answer, but she remained obdurate and said, No, I did not open the forbidden door. On this, the good fairy took the newborn baby in her arms and disappeared with it. In the morning, when the child could not be found, a murmur arose amongst the people. They declared that the queen had destroyed her baby. She heard all they said, but she could not explain. However, the king loved her too well to believe a word of evil against her. In another year, the queen had a second son born, and again the good fairy appeared to her and said, if thou wilt now confess that thou hast opened the forbidden door, I will restore to thee thy child and set thy tongue at liberty. But if thou wilt persist in thy denial, thou shalt still remain dumb, and I will take away from thee thy second baby also. But the queen again replied, No, I did not open the forbidden door. Then the fairy took up the second child and carried it away to her palace in the clouds. The next morning, when the second child also was missing, the people were loud in their complaints against the queen. They even said that they believed she was an ogress and had eaten it. The king's counselors also demanded that she should be brought to justice. But the king's love for her was so great that he believed nothing, and even threatened the counselors, who, at the peril of their lives, did not dare to say a word against her. But in the third year, a little baby girl was born to the queen, 
And the good fairy came a third time and said to her, Follow me. Then she took her by the hand and carried her to the palace in the clouds. She led her in and showed her two beautiful boys who were laughing and playing beyond the stars in the glorious sunlight. Great was the queen's joy at seeing her children, and the good fairy said to her, Is thy heart not yet softened? Even now, if thou wilt confess that thou hast opened the forbidden door, I will restore to thee both thy two little sons. But the queen answered for the third time, No, I did not open the forbidden door. Then the good fairy allowed her to sink down again to earth, and took away from her the newborn daughter. When the people discovered the next morning that the third child was missing, they became very angry and said, Our queen is really an ogress. She has eaten her children. She must be condemned to die. This time the king could not silence his counselors. The queen was brought before the tribunal, and as she would not answer nor defend herself, she was condemned to be burned alive. The funeral pyre was formed, and she was fastened to the stake, but when the flames began to spread around, her pride was melted from her heart, and she repented. The thought arose, Oh, if I could only confess to the good fairy before I die, and tell her that I did open that door. And as she thought this, her voice came back to her, and she cried, Oh, good fairy, tell true, I am guilty. As soon as the words were out of her mouth, the rain began to pour down and quickly put out the flames. A bright light surrounded her, and in it appeared the good fairy, leading by the hand the queen's dear, long-lost boys, and carrying in her arms the little baby girl. The fairy spoke kindly to her and said, Now that thou hast confessed thy sin and art forgiven, I can restore to thee not only the power of speech, but also thy three dear children and promise thee happiness and joy for the remainder of thy life. For, she said, those who confess and forsake their sins shall find mercy. The End